OpenAI announced a game-changing update for ChatGPT, support for plugins, which means that ChatGPT can now interact directly with the world, which means ChatGPT can not only say things, it can actually do things for you as well. And this is huge. Let's take a look at what I found to be the most interesting things ChatGPT can do now with this new plugin edition. Make sure you watch until the end because number six is a game changer and it is the one I am by far the most excited about. It's gonna let you do so many new things, but I am getting ahead of myself. Here's how you get access. This feature was just released, so unfortunately it's not widely available yet. You have to sign up for the plugin waitlist. And if you go to the OpenAI website and go to join the plugin waitlist, this will take you to this page and you can go enter in your name and email and join the waitlist. I did this yesterday, so I'm hoping that this gets rolled out soon and we all get to play with this ASAP. So if you have developer access or ChatGPT Plus, which is the paid plan, I imagine you're gonna get access before anybody else. So fingers crossed that happens soon. As of now, OpenAI has a couple of their own plugins they're releasing as well as these third party ones. So you're gonna be able to connect ChatGPT with these plugins to do a bunch of different things. So let's look at the most interesting cases. So plugin number one is the web browser plugin. This is developed by OpenAI. This basically gives ChatGPT similar functionality to Bing's AI chatbot in that it can search the web and give you an output based on that. This also means ChatGPT can give you up-to-date information. If you'll recall previously, it only knew things up until about September, 2021, and didn't know anything more recent than that. But now since it's connected to the internet through the browser plugin, that is no more, and ChatGPT can access more up-to-date recent information. All the examples I'm gonna show you are examples given by OpenAI, because I don't have access yet, very few people do as far as I know at this point, but this is what they've given us so far to show us how all of these plugins are going to work. So for example, you can see it has the browsing plugin activated and we're gonna, it's gonna ask, how did this year's Oscar winners compare to recently released movies for box office sales? And ChatGPT is going to browse the web, conduct a search before it answers. And let's see what it does. So it figures out that the Oscar winner for best picture was everything everywhere all at once. It earned hundred million at the box office and compares that to recently released movies such as Scream 6, which has grossed $58 million in its first seven days. So ChatGPT uses what it finds in its search and uses that to construct its answer. Okay, cool. We've seen this trick before, Bang already does it, but it is cool that ChatGPT is gonna have this ability now with the browsing plugin. So on to the next. Plugins number two, three, and four are Wolfram Alpha, OpenTable and Instacart. And the interesting thing here I wanna show you is that ChatGPT can interact with multiple different plugins from within the same prompt. So in this example, the prompt is this, I'm looking to eat vegan food in San Francisco this weekend. Could you get me one great restaurant suggestion for Saturday and a simple recipe for Sunday, just the ingredients. Please calculate the calories for the recipe using Wolfram Alpha. Finally, order the ingredients on Instacart. So let's see how ChatGPT handles that. That is asking for three separate plugins in one prompt. So first ChatGPT uses the open table plugin to find a vegan restaurant in San Francisco and it recommends Green's restaurant and it provides you a link you can click on to go and make a reservation. Then it goes on to give you a recipe for chickpea salad. It gives you all of the ingredients and then it's gonna use Wolfram Alpha to calculate the calories that that recipe uses. So total calories for chickpea salad are approximately 862 dietary calories and the breakdown of calories for each ingredient. So for the last plugin, ChatGPT is going to use Instacart. So it's making a shopping list for that chickpea salad and giving us a link which we can click on and open in our Instacart app. And there's all the ingredients right there ready to be ordered. So you can go click order that and have those ingredients sent directly to your door, all through ChatGPT. Plugin number five is called the Code Interpreter. And as OpenAI describes it, it is an experimental ChatGPT model that can use Python, handle uploads, and download. So let's look at a couple things it can do. So first up, using the Code Interpreter plugin, you can actually upload images and manipulate them and get it to do different things. So let's see what that looks like. So it's gonna upload this image. You can see here at the top that we have the model code interpreter alpha. So that is using this plugin. And we uploaded this image and it is describing what is in the image. It can look at that image and tell you exactly what is in it. So maybe not super useful on its own, but you can actually get it to manipulate the image as well. So can you make it four times smaller? And there we go, it's made the file four times smaller. Can you turn it grayscale? It turns a grayscale. Please tint it a little lighter green. 
So yep, it's gone and done that. It's made it a lighter green color. Now use OpenCV to select foreground only. So if you wanted to say remove a background from an image, you could do that. And it's hard to tell with this image, um, but you can see the little green bit in the corner is gone. Some of the outer glow from the outer circle is gone and it's just replaced it with a black background. And then you can ask it to generate a download link so you can download the new image that it has created for you. With the code interpreter plugin, it can also do a bunch of things like generate graphs and charts. So let's just scroll through here a bit. It's plotted this function. It's adjusted that graph to zoom in for specific values. It's plotted a tangent. So lots of uses here for school and work. The code interpreter can also read CSV files. So in this example, they have uploaded a file named music.csv and we're asking what are the columns of this data set? So it can look into that file and tell you what the columns are. And you can ask it to run some basic visualization. So create some charts and graphs based on the data in the CSV file. So it's gonna go and do that. And we've, and it's generated all sorts of different plots based on that data set that we uploaded. And plugin number six is Zapier. And this is the one I am most pumped for. It is going to be a game changer, especially for entrepreneurs and business owners, because Zapier is already a super useful tool. It allows you to connect various SaaS tools and put them together and create automations to make things happen and automate basically whole parts of your business without you having to do anything manually. So this means that ChatGPT is now connected to this whole host of different business and software tools. So as an example, in case you're not familiar with Zapier, here's a simple automation I might set up for my business. So when I get a new lead from say a Facebook ad, I can let my team know about it in a Slack message and then have that new lead added to my email list in MailChimp. So I can set this up with Zapier and have all of these things, snap, 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 go automatically from one thing to the next to the next. Every time I get a new lead on Facebook, all these three things will happen. And now ChatGPT can enter into that process and do a whole host of different things. And basically the plugin will allow you to connect to 5,000 different apps, such as Google Sheets, Gmail, Slack, Discord, MailChimp, most things you can think of. Um, there's a lot. You're gonna be able to basically ask ChatGPT to do something in another app and it's gonna be able to do it. So for example, I could type in, find my last email from Lars and ChatGPT is gonna use Zapier and say, oh, I found that email from Lars. It's gonna pull it through the Zapier connection and pull in that email. So through Zapier, you're gonna be able to set a, an action up to connect to your Gmail account. So JatGPT can go and actually search your Gmail and pull up that last email. Okay, let's take that a step further. You can also get ChatGPT to write and send emails to your prospects. So ChatGPT can not only pull up that email, you can also get it to craft an email to Lars. And then after your approval, it can go and send that email through Gmail to Lars. So thanks. Can you reply to Lars and let him know? I'll be happy to chat more about the Zapier partnership program available Tuesday morning for a meeting. And then it's going to draft an email to send to Lars. You can go to press to review and send the email, go and press run if you are happy with that. And then it's going to go and send that email to Lars. Pretty freaking useful. So another example, you can get ChatGPT to write and send chat messages to your team through Slack. So say you pick up a new lead in your business and you wanna share that information with your team through Slack. So you can get ChatGPT to generate you a message and then send that to your team in Slack. So this is just setting up the connection with Slack and Zapier. We're enabling that. Thanks, could you now summarize the lead's details and share it with my sales team in Slack? So again, it's gonna use Zapier. I have prepared a message to share the lead's details. You can click on that, approve that, and click to run and create the message in Slack and send it to your selected group channel in Slack. Another app Zapier can connect ChatGPT to is Notion. So if you wanna add, update, or search for database items, you can do that through ChatGPT. So can you please check if Lars is already on my Notion lead list? If not, can you add them? So it's going to go and find that lead and you're gonna approve the information it's adding and run that and then that lead will be added to the database. And this is without you having to go into any of these apps. You don't have to go into Slack. You don't have to go into Notion. You don't have to go into MailChimp or whatever it is. You can simply interact with it through ChatGPT and ChatGPT is going to make these modifications and perform these actions for you. 
These are just a few really simple examples of what ChatGPT and Zapier can do together. I'm sure we're gonna see a whole bunch of useful things coming out as this gets rolled out to more people. And I'm really excited to see what we're gonna be able to do with this because it's gonna make work so much easier and save so much time. And I, for one, will be impatiently waiting to get access to this. But in the meantime, if you want to improve your chat GBT, prompting skills to get better, less generic results and make it spit out things that are actually useful, then check out my AI prompt cheat sheet. This is a PDF with a bunch of prompt templates as well as chock full of examples for really good prompts that you can use with either ChatGPT or Bing. And you can grab that for free at the link in the description below. But that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like, hit subscribe and share it with a friend. I truly appreciate all of your support. Otherwise, if you want to learn more helpful ChatGPT prompting tips, check out this video next. And if you'd prefer Bing, check out this one. But that is it for this video. So I'll see you guys next time.